So here's the two main points, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you why I'm saying these two main points. Number one, there are no scientific clinical experiments that show that plants are healthy for humans to ingest. Number two, there are no clinical experimental um, trials or experiments to show that meat causes any disease. So let's go through some of these slides. So it all has to do with how scientific experiments are conducted, period, in any field. And there has to be an experiment, but there's this whole process before the experiment and then after the experiment. So before the experiment, there is an observation. And with that observation, there might be a survey. There may be some collection of data. There might be some Excel spreadsheets used to gather up and organize the data. But th and then you get a hypothesis, which is an educated guess. After that, the next step is to do a clinical experiment. And I'm talking nutrition, so I'm talking healthcare. I'm talking about clinics and doctors and patients. So a clinical experiment to find out if that hypothesis is correct or not. If it is correct, then you publish that data and then you let other clinics do the same experiment to see if they can replicate the results. And then um, if it doesn't, if the hypothesis is not proven by the experiment, then you can go back and relook at the observations and come up with a new hypothesis. So it's all about the experiment. So this graphic right here shows the experiment done in the middle of the scientific process. And most graphics that I've looked at are correct. They have an experiment, but I did find some graphics they claim to be the scientific process, but there's no experiment. So this is on Wikimedia and it says collect data. Does that data reject a hypothesis? Yes or no, knowledge is gained, but where's the experiment? So this is not the scientific process right here. Okay, so just remember you gotta have that experiment or else it's opinion, it's just simply that simple. Now with these opinion observational studies, there's a way to measure the numbers and then you come up with a number that's above or below one. If the number is one, then what you're testing is neither beneficial nor harmful. And if you're testing something and it's below one, for example, you're testing is does bubble gum prevent people from falling down and your number is 0 0.8, it's, it's better than, it's lower than one, that means that that bubble gum does prevent people from falling down. But if your number is above one, such as three or 10, then it means likely the bubble gum does not prevent you from falling down. It maybe is causing it, but you don't know until you do an experiment. So now that number, whether it's one or above or below one, is called the relative risk or odds ratio or hazard ratio. That's that very first bullet point on this uh, slide. Now, if your number is above one, but it's like 1.2, it's not high enough to even consider to send up to an experiment. If it's above three or four, now you're thinking, okay, this should be tested in an experiment to see if the hypothesis is correct or not. And when this type of observational studies are done on cigarettes, their number is well above one, it's over 100. So this is a collection of observational studies on whether or not eating certain foods causes cancer or prevents cancer. And on the left, we have all these different studies, wine, tomatoes, tea. There's uh, meat such as pork, beef, bacon. There's also bread, sugar, salt, olive, milk, lemon, corn. So all these different foods, all these different studies, every single dot is a different study. And overall, the relative risk is one. It's actually 0 0.998. So do these foods cause cancer or prevent cancer? And the answer is no, it does neither. These foods do not cause, nor do they prevent cancer. So the question then is, well, what may be the cause of cancer? In my opinion, it's high insulin. And number two, lack of ketosis. So now, now another collection of observational studies tested does protein intake affect cancer or heart disease? And again, the relative risk was one, 0 0.98. So the answer is no, it does not prevent or cause cancer, nor does it prevent or cause heart disease because the relative risk there is 0 0.99, which is basically one. And this could be plant or animal protein. So when somebody says eating meat, animal protein is bad for you, hurts your kidneys, whatever, it's not true. There is an exception, maybe if you have kidney failure and you're on dialysis, then yeah, but for healthy people, no. Here's another slide about does red meat cause cancer or heart disease? And this is a collection of scientific experiments 
not observational studies, not surveys, not opinion, not hypotheses, but simply scientific experiments that give you true facts? And the answer is no. So the effect of lower versus higher red meat intake on cardiometabolic and cancer outcomes, this is a systemic review of randomized trials. And it says that eating animal protein, red meat, does not cause cancer nor heart disease. And quite frankly, maybe it protects it. But the point is there are zero scientific experiments that show meat causes any disease. So anybody that says red meat is bad or you can eat too much red meat causes cancer, heart disease, it's not true. And that, that debunks the whole vegetarian, vegan platform and, and several religions too. There's several religions that say that red meat needs to be limited veganism or vegetarianism is, is better than eating red meat or any kind of meat, or maybe you should only eat fish because of the omega-3s. No, none of that's true. There's simply no disease that meat causes. Now, this is a great slide. It's a video with Dr. Georgia Each. He's a psychiatrist at Harvard. I'm a big fan. And she did a search on PubMed trying to find out, do vegetables um, affect your health in any way? So she used the search term vegetables and health and the bottom line is, there are zero scientific experiments that show vegetables are healthy for humans. Now, I'm going to play this video. It's about two and a half minutes long. So bear with me. It's a really good video. Just as an experiment, I wanted to, to get a feel for what kinds of evidence is out there supporting vegetables and health. And so what I did was I went on PubMed, and which is a search engine for those of you who don't know, the percentage of particles. And um, uh, there are over 80,000 studies about vegetables, so I obviously couldn't go through all of those, uh, narrowed them down to, the, to uh, randomized control studies having to do with vegetables and health. And I used the word health because if anything, that might induce a positive bias. It's looking for evidence to support vegetables. And so unfortunately, most of these studies I, I had to eliminate uh, from, from the consideration because most of them were irrelevant to the question. The vast majority of studies about vegetables were about how to get people to eat more of them, not about whether or not they were actually healthy. So, and of the studies that remained, 18 of them were negative. The investigators were looking for health benefits from vegetables and didn't find what they were hoping to see. And as you might notice here, uh, the, another problem with vegetable studies is that the vast majority of vegetable studies are not studies of vegetables, they're studies of fruits and vegetables. The fruits and vegetables are very different uh, from a plant point of view and from our point of view. They're, they're just completely different features. So hard to say. So in the positive studies, I found 10 positive studies, but unfortunately none of them control for refined carbohydrates. It's very hard to say whether or not the health benefits that the investigators claimed were due to the vegetables were due to the vegetables or whether they were due to the fact that the people who were eating more fruits and vegetables were eating less refined carbohydrate. And 10 other positive studies, unfortunately, manipulated more than one variable. So they didn't just add more vegetables to people's diets. They also happened to reduce sodium or reduce saturated fat or um, add exercise, et cetera. So it's just hard to tell which part of the diet was or, or the intervention was responsible for the health benefit. I'm not saying that the vegetables couldn't have been responsible because they could have been. We just can't tell because of the way the studies were designed. Let me repeat. There are no studies, clinical scientific experiments that show that vegetables are healthy for humans to eat. So this debunks and deplatforms every single uh, nutritionist and dietitian university professor, medical doctor, um, influencer who says, eat your vegetables, veg vegetables are healthy for you. All I have to do is say, well, show me one clinical experiment to prove what you're saying is true. One, all it takes is one to, and maybe there's, this video is actually 10 years old. So I emailed Georgia last week and she replied a few days ago. And my question to her was, have you repeated that effort to look for vegetables and health on PubMed? And she said she did, and it was the same result. There were no studies that show vegetables and are good for your health for humans. And most of the studies were trying to get people to eat more vegetables. And some of the studies were positive and some were negative. So yeah, basically 
almost half of these studies that she found show that eating vegetables and fruit together are are bad and and you know of course the studies were not designed very well and there's too many uh confounders so this is the basis of my second statement that uh, there's no clinical scientific evidence that shows that vegetables are good for human health by the way dr e did this incredible study in her clinic it's a, on the ketogenic diet with people with mental illness and on the very far right of this uh, document there the graphic it says 100 percent of the patients had improvement in their health in their mental illness 100 percent of the 31 inpatients got better on the ketogenic diet 100 percent. you want me to say it again all the fingers are pointing at high insulin as the problem of the degradation of the human body mental illness heart disease cancer and the solution is ketosis it's the lack of sugar in the blood that makes the cells burn fat that is the native state of the body and the basis of ketosis is either fasting or eating meat but you can't fast for the rest of your life you have to eat something and meat is that most nutritious food meat and liver so that's just a few of my slides and i'm presenting at eco if you're a practitioner this is a seminar in boise it's three days long there's going to be uh, you know 12 1400 people there live and live streaming with a wide number of uh, seminar deliveries. Um, a lot of them are 30 minutes. So it's kind of like TED Talk style. And there's some uh, feature speakers. One of them is Dr. Tom Cowan. I'm a big fan of his. I first um, saw him speak over 20 years ago. And um, he talked about lactic acidosis, which at the time I didn't understand what he was saying, but now I fully grasp what he was saying. Uh, since I experienced it myself, I have plenty of videos on my YouTube channel about that subject. He's had a great career. He retired recently and now he's on the speaking circuit. I'm giving you a code below so that you can register and get a discount. Any kind of early bird special, I think that's over with on this slide right here. But use my code and you'll get a discount.